Welcome to Tesla Info and today we're going to take a look at the autopilot or FSD type system that Tesla offer on cars that aren't on the FSD beta program. So this is what you'll get if you're in any country other than the US if you buy autopilot and we'll talk about EAP and FSD in a minute in terms of what that adds. So first of all motorways or trunk roads or the, the main sort of like arterial roads in your countries. You know, these roads, no pedestrians, you know, central reservations, smart managed. And these and the Tesla basically handles these type of roads absolutely fine. You know, you can just drive along and there are very few issues with them. Um, but there are a few. So here we got some speeded up footage and we coming up to a motorway merge. So the road signs are telling us that the lane we're in is actually going to have to merge into another cat into another carriageway. Now autopilot has slowed us down from 70 to 65 miles an hour. Um, but we're on autopilot now just for clarity. We see a bit of a ghost island appearing on our left which is just as well because we're caning on the lorry and autopilot is going to try and squeeze us until it actually aborts and we have to lane change. Now we were obviously paying attention and we were happy to take over but we just had to leave it as long as we could to demonstrate uh, the issue. Another issue with motorways is speed limit signs. Now the perverse thing is uh, Tesla will actually read the speed limit signs including matrix signs. What's perverse about it is it won't actually change the set autopilot speed. So if you're doing 70 and you come up to a sign that's saying 60 or 50 in that case, it will change the speed limit sign but it won't change the maximum speed the car will do an autopilot. It leaves it to the set speed. So basically you will just break the speed limit. If we weren't being slowed down by traffic here we would be speeding. That issue aside, you know, motorways are great. You know, this is stop stop code traffic. We're not really looking to change lane particularly. You know, if you start weaving on traffic like this, you don't really gain anything. Uh, and it just following the car in front, it'll do fine. We've got another speed limit sign coming up now. And again, the car will just basically, you know, say yeah, it's 40, but not do anything with that information. Okay, we're now giving a bit of speed up footage. And we're going to come up to a, uh, a national speed limit return, so limits have been removed, it's back to 70, and the car will again acknowledge the 70 mile hour speed limit, but not increase. Um, we'll see later on that actually the, the systems will never increase beyond the first set speed, so if you set it at 60 to start with as the first speed, um, it will go down and back up to 60, but will never exceed 60. Um, So a couple of differences um, with EAP and FSD. With EAP you get uh, navigate on autopilot uh, and the ability to automatically change lanes. Um, when we say automatically you still have to indicate. Navigate on autopilot will actually recommend lane changes for you um, and if you indicate it will take it. If you haven't got navigate to autopilot on you can just indicate when it's safe to do so the car will change lanes. Anyway, so that's an EAP benefit which does actually save you um, from having to intervene because on a road like this, if we wanted to change lane, it would cancel autopilot steering and we have to re engage. Anyway, we're coming up to the motorway, so we've indicated that's knocked off the auto steer function, left the speed function on, and this is quite a nice feature. The autopilot speed side of it is now reducing the maximum speed in increments down, so it's effectively slowing us down on the off ramp and it's going to bring us actually to a stop at the end of the slip road at the roundabout the car will actually force us to stop and that will then give you the opportunity to take over control to navigate the roundabout so that's pretty much it for motorways we're go now going to have a look at dual carriageways which are effectively the next class down in the UK at least and again they're almost exactly the same as motorways in terms of what they do. Um, the car will generally be quite happy on them. Uh, lane changing, you still, if you haven't got EAP or FSD, when you indicate it disengages steering, you change lane, then have to re-engage it. It's not great 
at stopping for traffic lights it's supposed to sort of recognize them but it's we found that with the AP the traffic light recognition is more something that beeps at you to tell you to go than it is something to actually stop you um, and here's a little challenge we've got the dual carriageways ended it's merging into one lane and the car at some point with the software development has got to be able to merge those two lanes successfully So we're now onto a normal two-way road and we'll talk about those uh, later. Here's another dual carriageway. This one's in a more urban area. So this time, although it's a dual carriageway, we have you know, pedestrians, we have quite a lot of uh, crossings and roads off to the side. And you know, autopilot is available here um, it's giving us the option, you can see the steering wheel icon just above the, the actual displayed speed on the top right hand corner of our screen. It's in a different position on left hand drive cars. But we've not felt it's suitable to do that on this type of road. Now this is an interesting point because Tesla you know, basically say that there are only certain road types you should use it on. But the car does give you the option to enable it. Why would Tesla give you the option to enable it on certain roads if it felt that it was not safe to do so? That's an open question and I think that's probably why some of the regulators are, are causing Tesla to uh, do more basically to try and save people from themselves. Uh, for those that sort of think regulators shouldn't intervene, uh, regulators don't tend to intervene for the person driving as much as they do for other people who are innocent bystanders. Um, so if a Tesla goes wrong and crashes into somebody, I think they're as concerned about the person being crashed into than the driver. But anyway, topic for another day. So going back to dual carriageways, we're at the end of a dual carriageway now. And again, it's just another issue that we have, certainly in the UK, that a lot of dual carriageways and junctions are get terminated by roundabouts. This one has actually got an awful lot of roadworks going on as well. So the car needs to understand and pick its way around. And this is where I agree with Tesla's line of not being reliant on HD mapping because you know a HD map would be wrong. You know that road layout is changing all the time because of the roadworks. However, you know the, the road markings and the lanes to follow are quite complicated. And as we'll see as we go around the corner, the car in front thinks it's in the wrong lane, has moved over to a lane, and actually the footage won't show it. But actually they were in the right lane originally, and they'll actually end up tucking it behind me. You know, drivers make mistakes. You know, I'm sure the software will as well. Um, it's not a perfect world. So motorways work and your carriageways it's fine the only issues with them are speed limits and junctions basically when you get to the end we're now looking at um, single track roads or single carriageway roads and an, a road like this which is you know fairly low it's not built up there is a footpath but it's, it's you know no pedestrians to be seen there is a ghost island down the middle with a bit of separation it actually works pretty well. Um, we've had to intervene here because it was following the car and getting into the right lane and we want the left lane. So like, you know, all the way through so far, it's the junctions actually the killer at the moment. And that's where you really need to step in. It's also worth noting actually that you have to step in. Autopilot will often plow through a junction if you're not careful. Um, here's a more rural one, no ghost island this time. There isn't actually a very clear left edge road marking. There is one just about to appear. Now the speed limit, we were doing 60, has automatically dropped to 50. And this time, the car has actually accepted the drop to 50 and has changed the maximum speed down. We've just sped the footage up. And when we reach the 60 limit, when it returns to 60, the car will speed back up again. It's that point about um, it won't go above the initially set speed, but it will go up and down on roads like this most of the time. You can't rely on it 100% but then we found that no speed limit system in any car is 100% foolproof. So the car's now accepted the speed limit has increased to 60 and is just driving quite happily. It's following the car in front and we actually find even on roads like this nighttime driving 
in dark, even with headlights coming towards you, it still does pretty well. Whether we'd recommend it all the time, find it quite stressful, but then on a road like this, certainly in the rain, in the dark, with the glare of headlights coming towards you, it was a stressful thing to do anyway. So it's probably an aid um, and worth doing at times. Just be careful. So this is a, an A road in the UK. We're now going to drop down to what you probably call a B road or a country road. Um, what we we wouldn't even attempt autopilot to be honest on a road like this. It's too twisty, too tight, um, too many potholes. You have to sort of steer around and avoid. Um, you know, it's just not worth it. You also get horses more often, cyclists, things like that. So it's just it's just not the type of road that we'd want to do. Um, but for educational purposes we've set the speed limit to 30 miles an hour on this particularly twisty bit so this is half the speed limit autopilot would try and do this at double this speed if you weren't careful so we're going to come to a left hand bend at half the speed limit and the car's already sort of touching if not crossing the double white line in the middle that would be an offense in the uk if it crossed it we're now going to come to another left hand bend now we're watching around the corner ready to intervene and it actually has crossed the road and it's cut out so it's cut out mid bend luckily it wasn't double white lines so no offence but there you go it's not worth it on those type of roads and uh, test to say city streets driving is coming soon yeah that's the promise for FSD and EAP uh, so here we are you know we're in an urban area FSD not EAP um, you've got lots more going on here now autopilot is offered on this road you can see it the circle is just above this speed it just just belies whether why you'd ever want to try here we've got a roundabout which I think is just you know the thing that is going to kill autopilot and self-driving for a long time in the UK other than on straight bits of road you know, he's got to sort of navigate these type of things. Uh, another challenge is where you've got parked cars. So here we've got two parked cars right opposite each other. There is no obvious right away. They flash to let me through, which actually technically is a warning rather than a come through, but everyone uses it as a come through. And that's the only way, you know, we agreed who's going to come through. Here we've got the individual carriageway. It's going down to one lane, a parked car, and autopilot has virtually stopped the car because that car is parked there and we've seen FSD beta in America has dealt with that slightly better but at the moment you know it just doesn't happen and then this is the lowest type of road we get which is real you know, single track roads effectively very rural you know you meet cars coming the other way and you have to find passing places so how Tesla are going to manage this in the future who knows but you know, you as a driver, you're constantly looking for opportunities to pull over. So we're just passing one now. Well, there's a car. We could have stopped there. I know there's another one coming up. And so we're going to try and find a slightly wider bit of road, a little bit of mild off-roading to get past each other. Yeah, forget autopilot for a long time in terms of dealing with roads like this. So that's all the different classes of road, you know, but let's look at some of the challenges for what Tesla says coming up. They have said with FSD that city streets driving is going to be possible soon. Well, this is a dual carriageway through a city. It's, you know, dual carriageways are roads that are supposed to be supported. But I just think it's too high risk. Would you trust the car? You know, you've got a dual carriageway. You're trying to leave gaps to let th people through, not end up parked across crossings you've got pedestrians walking through it just seems madness to even attempt to use autopilot or fsd when it's available on a road like this i mean i'd be delighted if it was you know we felt it was so confident that it could do it but um i have low hopes here's another sort of challenge for the future so we're coming up a road here now 
um, and it's what lane do we need to be in so the writing on the road tells you what lane it's not a road sign the map might tell you but the car I've got directly in the right hand lane because I know where I'm going and actually that is a longer lane of traffic if I'd gone down the left I'd have been perfectly blocked out by part traffic here we've got a quite complicated junction it's a right turn onto a dual carriageway two lanes of traffic no real clear lane markings this is nothing like the FSD beta videos you see in America and we're just trying to sort of like swing around and make it into the dual carriageway you know it's not an uncommon thing in the UK at least to have the directions written on the road but you can't always read that so here we've got an example vision only the writing on the road, A, it's, it's partly worn out, but actually it's covered by cars. So you can't actually know what lane you're in. Now, Tesla's sort of saying they're trying not to rely on maps. You, um, you can't pick everything up off the road. In fairness, drivers have the same issue, you know, if we're honest. Um, but drivers tend to have that sort of view past, pick up other cues. I don't even know what they are at times, but you pick up where where you think the road's going to go um, and what lane to be in. You don't always get it right, but I think there's something that I'd love to know what it is that makes drivers pick that up. And here we've got sort of city streets, again, example. You've got a park bus, lots of parked cars, very tight and narrow. You know, and here's another example of a bridge in the country road. You know, this is a one-way stuff and the number of times you meet somebody coming the other way you know I'm looking across the corner um, before we get to that bridge for the road to see if anything's coming along before I commit to that um, autopilot needs to be able to do that as well but they, I mean these are things for the future so I want to conclude really if you're thinking if you're getting a Tesla right and you get an autopilot then on roads of this type and better so dual carriageways and motorways other than junctions it's great it does it it follows the road you know there are some arguments about you know windscreen wipers coming on automatic headlights but in general it just does it but so do most of the other systems it's when you get to junctions and things that the complexity starts if you're looking at EAP certainly with cars without the parking sensors you get virtually nothing extra because auto park, um, summer and things like that, they just, just don't work without the parking sensors and that's still not around yet. And for FSD, the thing you get in the city streets, you know, some big potholes which just bumped over, if autopilot doesn't try and avoid those either. Um, city streets, I just don't understand what you, how you'd ever use that in the UK. I really don't. Even with the FSD beta program in America and all that's capabilities, I just don't think um, that's going to apply here anytime soon. And I think you'll spend so much time trying to work out what the car's doing, you won't be paying attention on what pedestrians are doing or what um, other road users are doing as much. Your, your attentions will be divided a little bit. And so the supervisory aspect is actually detracting you and you're better off just driving because you driving is almost six cents intuitive you know for most people anyway so there you go that's our summary we will just stick to autopilot and just use it safely be careful out there because you know the roads are lethal <laughs>